Hi there. Flying into Canada is about to become a whole lot more complicated. And if you do leave the country, there's a price to pay. As we come on the air this morning, the first set of strict new travel rules have kicked into effect. Canada's major airlines are suspending flights to popular sunny getaways, the Caribbean and Mexico. That starts today and for the next three months until at least the end of April. Starting Wednesday, all international flights can only land in Vancouver, Calgary, Toronto and Montreal. And then in the coming weeks, those flying home will have to get a mandatory COVID test when they land in Canada. That is in addition to the test required before you even get on the plane. And they'll have to go into supervised quarantine for up to three days at their own expense, which is estimated to be more than 2000 bucks per traveler. All of this, obviously, an effort to put the brakes on spring break. Officials fear the new, likely more contagious variants of the virus are picking up speed and curbing non-essential travel is a new priority to slow the spread of COVID here at home. To talk more about that, the Minister of Transport, Omar Al-Gabra, he joins me this Sunday morning from Mississauga, Ontario. Good to see you, Minister. Good morning, Rosemary. Uh, So I know that we've obviously got the the suspension of travel starting today, but there are some components of what was announced on Friday that we don't have answers to yet. So I'll start there if I can. Mandatory testing on arrival and quarantines. When is that expected to start taking place? Um, Again, thank you for having me on your show, Rosemary, to answer these important questions. Um, Those are gonna start as soon as possible. So Public Health of Canada, uh, is the lead on implementing these new measures. Um, they are preparing uh, one. Let me also remind your viewers, part of our new measures is to direct all international flights through only four airports, the four right. major air- airports in Vancouver, Calgary, Toronto and Montreal. And the preparation now is being done to prepare these four airports to receiving all passengers uh, to assess passengers if they're uh, on essential travel or not. Non-essential travelers will, will be required to uh, get the uh, the PCR test and uh, to quarantine up to three days at a hotel until the test results are out. So it, I can't give you a specific date, but it's going to happen as soon as possible in February. Okay. Uh, okay. So in fe- so on Wednesday, I believe is when the uh, you're starting to funnel the flights to those four airports. So would it be within this week or a, w- a week after? Just so people have a sense of the timing. Uh, look, I if you were asked me, my advice, uh, I would ask people to be prepared as soon as February fourth hit to be okay. prepared for that. Uh, I can't tell you if that's exactly when it's going to start, but I would ask people to be ready for it as soon as as possible. Okay, and just some practical questions people might have too. Because you're limiting the trans- those international flights to those four airports, do you have to get your test and quarantine in those spots where you first land? Yes, yes. Okay. So, so the test will be done at the airports and, and the hotels will be by those airports. And then after you've received a negative test, you can travel to your final destination and quarantine there, is that correct? Correct. You will okay. still have to have quarantine plan for the remainder of the 14 day quarantine at your home. The prime minister said and has said now for the past couple of weeks, now is not the time to be flying. Um, presumably that was also the case back in December. Why did you wait until now to do this? Look, uh, Rosemary, we started actually, the prime minister actually said this last March, March of 2020. Uh, we, our government issued a travel advisory then calling on all Canadians to avoid non-essential travel. We also then imposed a 14-day quarantine period. We also then banned foreigners from entering Canada. We've adjusted these policies along the way, including earlier on this year where we started requiring any traveler coming to Canada to get a COVID test pre-departure. So nobody can Mm -hmm. board a plane coming to Canada unless they have a negative COVID test. And today we're adding extra layers on top of that because of the rise of variants around the world. It added extra emphasis on the need to avoid non-essential travel and extra emphasis on screening and quarantining. I, I understand all that, um, but I mean, you could have gone even further, right? I mean, you, you did manage to reach an agreement with the airlines for a suspension of these par- particular parts of the world, but why not just prevent travel entirely? Uh, Rosemary, that's a good question. And honestly, we thought a long time, and I, I don't wanna say a long time because we had to act quickly, but yeah. we thought very hard about it. 
uh, and we considered all options. We even considered banning all flights, but that would have would have had a detrimental impact on our uh, uh, the delivery of essential products and services to Canada, uh, uh, trade, uh, vaccine, uh, medical equipment. So we wanted to make sure that we don't have a negative impact on other important aspects of our society and our economy. So what we ended up doing is creating customized solution where it may be. No one answer is perfect, but combining all of these options together gives us a solid plan to protect Canadians. I'm sure you've heard from lots of people, Minister, uh, who, who ask the question, well, why just the Caribbean and Mexico? Why not Florida? Why not Hawaii? Why not Arizona? Places where a lot of Canadians go choose to spend the winter. That, that is a good question. And let me emphasize that the new measures about testing upon arrival, the quarantine at a hotel, the cost of the quarantining at a hotel applies to all non-essential travelers. So people who go to Hawaii or Florida or London, England for vacation will have to face the same requirements. Uh, the agreement with the airlines was a voluntary agreement to destinations where we know most Canadians tend to travel during spring break and March break. Now, I agree, there are other destinations that Canadians still go on vacation and um, the new measures apply to them. And we're also in the middle of a discussion uh, with our American friends to, uh, to perhaps impose new measures. But keep in mind, uh, the United States also is an integral part of our supply chain. So we needed to make sure, as I said, to customize solutions that targets public health, but ma maintains that we uh, re continue to receive yeah. essential products for, for our society. You, you said you were discussing with our, with our neighbors uh, other measures. What, what other measures are, you, are we talking about or what's on the table there, Minister? Look, uh, you know that the Biden new administration has already uh, imposed some measures, by the way, to uh, do what we've been doing for, for many months. Yep. So they're doing some of the policies that we've already implemented. And uh, my friend, uh, Minister Bill Blair, is leading the conversation with the Americans right now on other measures. I'm not able really to uh, prejudge what the outcome is going to be, but it certainly includes uh, topics of non-essential travel, uh, land borders, etc. Okay. Um, the, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control this week said that it was actively looking at requiring mandatory testing for domestic travel. Is that something that you think could be in our future here too? So the domestic travel is really, it depends on the provinces. So as you know, for example, the Atlantic provinces have created their own bubble and have been doing similar things. So it really will up, be up to the provincial authorities to decide what to do with domestic travel. But uh, as we have been doing all along, working closely with our uh, friends in the provinces on finding measures uh, that we can help them with. Airline rules are, are federal authority, if I'm not mistaken. Could you not uh, mandate all airports uh, for domestic travel to require testing? Yeah, I mean, the, the airports, uh, those are provincial uh, boundaries. So depending on where the flight, yes, we, we uh, regulate what's in the air, uh, but we don't regulate when you cross, when they cross uh, provincial uh, boundaries. Boundaries okay. are up to the provincial uh, terrorists. As I said, the Atlantic bubble is yeah. a great example. It wasn't decided by the federal government. It was decided by the provincial premiers. Uh, finally, let me ask you about the airlines, because they, they voluntarily decided to suspend these flights, uh, but they were also many of them, many representatives in front of the Transport Committee this week pleading for uh, financial support. Uh, how are those conversations going? Are they, they continue, and, and where would you say the negotiations are at? Look, let me say a couple of things. First, let me say that the airline sector has been hit the hardest in our economy. Uh, every sector has been hit hard because of COVID but the airline sector and the aerospace sector for sure has been hit the hardest. And, and air sector employees and staff have been mm -hmm. really uh, paying a price for this, uh, for the many restrictions that have been imposed. Uh, Canadians themselves have also been uh, 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 carrying a price for canceled flights, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's not, uh, it's, it's something that we're very aware of and it's something that we decided. And by the way, we've made some assistance for airlines. So, um, uh, $1.1 billion have been committed for regional routes, for airports uh, and, and other um, uh, uh, remote areas. Uh, $1.5 billion have been uh, benefiting uh, the airline sector for waste subsidy. So that's a total of $2.6 billion to date. 
However, we know we recognize that there needs to be more support. Last November, we've engaged the airline sector on discussions for a package. We know that now new measures add extra burden. Therefore, we think we're going to, you know, there's going to be an extra sense of urgency to get these discussions going. So I look forward to supporting uh, the airline sector workers. Let me tell you, I've been hearing from a lot of airline mm -hmm. employees. I know the difficult and the anxiety, the difficult time and the anxiety they're going through. And as we've demonstrated all along, we want to be there uh, for people who are suffering for uh, no fault of their own. Okay, Minister, we'll leave it there this morning. Thank you for making the time, appreciate it. Thank you very much.